How are addictions created? Well, addictions are created by the desire to do one of four things with our painful emotions, and in particular with the painful emotion of fear. Uh -huh. And those four things are firstly to deny fear exists, to suppress the feeling of the fear, to resist the feeling of the fear, or to substitute other feelings for the feeling of the fear, in place of the feeling of the fear. And if we desire to do any of those four things, we will create addictions automatically. <laughs> so our addictions are generally automatically created without much thought, uh -huh. as soon as we enter the state where we deny, suppress, resist, or want to substitute. Yep. So that's the primary way in which all of our addictions are created. Great. Pretty concise. It is. <laughs> uh, there's a few notes here. Of course. We, yeah. we need to, of course, see the circumstances under which they might be created. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we've created some extra notes for people to understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you like me to uh, Yes, listen let's the first list them one, one by one yep. and, uh, and then we'll discuss them. So we're attempting to deny, resist or suppress grief by replacing real love with emotions masquerading as love. Yes, so this refers back to, you remember there is a direct relationship between fear and, and how fear is created and addictions and how addictions are created. So remember if we go back to the, uh, the fear and how fear was created, we firstly had the withdrawal of love, the withdrawal of truth, the emotions, the, the, the um, addictions masquerading as love mm -hmm. and the lies masquerading as truth. Yes. So naturally there is going to be a link now between the way fear is created and, and how addictions are created. Because mm -hmm. addictions are created by the suppression or the attempts to suppress, deny, resist or place something in lieu of your fear. Yeah. So of course there's going to be a direct re relationship between how fear is created and how addictions are created. Yes, mm. yes, absolutely. So in this first particular one, we're looking at the lies masquerading as love. Yes. Aren't we? So, so whenever there are lies masquerading as, sorry, uh, addictions masquerading as love, what, what happens there is that we, we think we're being loving mm -hmm. And we desperately want that type of love, right. right? A feeling of love coming from somebody, uh -huh. but it's a misinterpretation of what real love is. So, so in other words, we think it's love, yeah. But because of our childhood uh, things that happened due to fear, we we are wrong. Uh -huh. We we actually believe that it's love, but it's not. Yeah. It's actually an addiction that was was getting met, and and we only think that somebody loves us when they. Uh, have some kind of addiction with us. Okay, so you're saying when when I have a lie, uh, a codependent or an addiction, addiction yeah. that I believe is love, yes. fear is created, yes. and then I can act to suppress the fear, the fear and the by wanting more of that codependent addiction. Got gotcha. you. So, yep. so, so, in other words. I'm screaming for, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm desperately wanting somebody to give me that feeling that I interpret as love. Yeah. Because the emotion in me causes me to interpret as love. Yeah. So somebody comes along and tells you that's not loving and you go, don't be stupid. I know what love is and that's love. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you're completely wrong. Yeah. Because you have the emotion inside of you that's causing you to interpret that as love. Yeah. Right. And that's the trouble with uh, addictions masquerading as love in our childhood mm. is that it causes this layer of fear that then have the have these addictions that are created that all want the addiction to be met so that you can feel like you're loved. Is that because without that addiction you feel zero love whatsoever? Correct. Somebody can even be loving you and yet you feel a zero love from them Mm -hmm. because they are not meeting your addiction. Yeah. Now, what I notice is this about a lot of spiritual people. Yes. They are experts at meeting people's addictions. Mm. Right? That's, can, we, 
can we call them spiritual in that way? No, they're not yeah. true. It's not true spirituality. But the so-called, you know, new age spiritual people who are, who are lovely people and are leaders in the in the field. Yes. They are experts at meeting people's addictions. Yeah. Now this is very very damaging, because basically it's lies. It's it's addictions masquerading as love. So the people like it because in their childhood, that's what they had as love. Mm -hmm. They had all of these addictions masquerading as love. Yeah. And so now as an adult, that's what they seek. Yeah. They seek people who act the same way as their parents acted when they felt a loving, which is really just a codependent addiction feeling from their parent. Yeah. And it's so sad to watch. And, and ironically, the opposite also occurs with me. So, so when people come along to me, they say, I don't feel much love coming out of you. Mm. I'm not meeting any of your addictions that you believe are loving to meet. Yeah. And when I don't meet them, you think I'm being nasty to you when I'm <laughs> actually not. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being loving to you in that place from God's perspective. But you think I'm being nasty because I'm not meeting your addictions. Mm. Yep. Yes. I have, I've got, you got hundreds I've got of half a thought going on there. process <laughs> going on in my head that I can't get out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I witness that all the time. Yeah. And I also know that um, it requires us becoming more sensitive emotionally to really sense love, to get beyond some addictions, yeah. to really sense it. Yeah. Um, and I suppose, let's move on to the next one. Yes. Yes. So let's cover all four and then if we want to discuss yeah. more, then we'll discuss yep. more. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So the second one is... And so remember, we're talking about how addictions are created here. Right. Yep. Yep. So they're created when we are attempting mm -hmm. to deny, resist or suppress fear by substituting other emotions which are temporarily more powerful. Yes. So in the first example, it was about grief and love. Yes. And now we're talking about fear and other emotions. Yes. So these are all, and by the way, these examples are not exhaustive. You know, there's yeah. many things that can create our addictions. But mm -hmm. what we need to do is just help people start to analyse what's going on here yeah. uh, rather than give an exhaustive answer yeah. about the question. But if we look at this particular issue, our desire to suppress creates the addiction. Mm -hmm. So, so it, remember, it's the desire to express, suppress the pain. Now, if the pain is sadness and we don't want to feel it, we will create an addiction. Now, the only reason why we wouldn't want to feel it is because we're afraid of feeling it, probably. So it's probably another layer on top. So this is why we often have sadness and then layer over the layer of sadness is fear. And then we don't want to fear, we fear our sadness. So we've got now fear of sadness. And then, of course, suppression of the fear causes us to want the addiction right so our desire to suppress any emotion is going to create automatically an addiction mm -hmm. and that is an automatic creation yeah it's not something that you'll even be conscious of it's an automatic creation of the from the desire to suppress yes and this is the, the thing we need to understand that just having a desire to suppress, mm -hmm. a desire to deny, a desire to resist, or a desire to substitute is going to automatically cause us to substitute. Yeah. <laughs> That's just going to happen automatically yeah. without us even being aware most of the time yeah. that it's happening. And unfortunately, because of that, we won't even be aware that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And most people are completely unaware when they are actually doing it, completely unaware. And it's only once you've released most of your own addictions that you see it happening everywhere. It's like, a, it's like this disease <laughs> or virus that people have, and you see it's happening everywhere and nobody knows because it's all a part of their normal day-to-day -day life in terms of helping them to do one of those four things with their painful emotions. Yeah, you and I, have joked in the past about um, the the current trend towards zombie movies. Yes, yes, and yes. And how yes. W what is that metaphorically um, uh, 
demonstrating about everyone wanting to suppress and deny so much that they become zombie-like and yeah. that's happening all around us anyway. Yeah. And, and yet they're terrified of zombies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not so terrified that they don't want to make a lot no, of movies no, no, about no, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it. And it's quite interesting uh, what's made movie-wise because oftentimes it is all an expression of what is being suppressed emotionally in the crowd. Yeah. And that's why it has certain, you know, people examining it, you know, and they're drawn to it more yeah. fully. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, mm. okay. So we talked about suppressing fear yep. and substituting other emotions. Yep. So the first one was suppression of grief, the desire to suppress grief. So grief is a painful emotion mm -hmm. for most people. And for most people, they view it as too painful to feel. Yep. And, and I suppose you could say shame also feels in that, but that is a fear-based emotion. Mm -hmm. So suppression of fear is, fear is usually another emotion. And remember fear ranging from even slight anxiety, most people are not wanting to feel, yeah. but absolute terror, most people have no desire to feel that whatsoever, of course. And so there are huge desires coming out of them to suppress the feeling, hence the attraction to the addictions. Yes, yeah. yes. If you have a desire to do the opposite, you won't create many addictions at all. Mm. And you won't have many addictions automatically. That's the irony. Mm. But once you have the addictions, very hard to get rid of them because the desire to suppress is present. And that's the problem. The desire to substitute is present. The desire to resist is present. The desire to deny is present. So you're going to have to, if you have any addictions at all, you're going to have to work on the desires that you have in your soul's will to deny, to resist, yes. to suppress, to substitute. It's not enough to simply stop doing the physical action. Or no, the, you won't be able to. It, it, you, it will mutate <laughs> into another into addiction. Another form. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 It, it, while the desire in you to suppress the underlying cause of emotion remains, Addictions are the necessary result inside of you. Mm -hmm. They're the thing you have to do mm -hmm. in order to help you avoid the painful experience. Yeah. And, and so you will do it. And it doesn't matter how much you think you won't, you will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. make that the truth. Mm. Okay, um, so the third example you were talking about denying, resisting or suppressing anger by substituting other emotions that are temporarily more powerful. Yes, now here I'm speaking not of adult anger, which we'll discuss in a different question. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking of the childhood anger that was created due to the suppression of the grief and fear that are caused by your environment at the time. So, mm -hmm. so see a lot of children are firstly told they're not allowed to feel their sadness Otherwise, they'll give, be given something to feel sad about. Mm -hmm. Which creates fear. Which creates fear. Yeah. And then when they feel afraid and they act on their fear, the parent goes, what are you afraid of? You've got nothing to be afraid of. And they're angry with the child and threaten violence towards them generally. Mm -hmm. So now the child is now afraid to express their fear. So now they have to put another layer on that. Now, if they can't get their addiction met to suppress their fear in that place as a child, they revert to anger or rebellion. Mm -hmm. Now, usually most children have that heavily suppressed mm -hmm. because they start to experience anger and then the parents do give them something to be, to be sad about mm. by belting them or being violent towards them. Mm -hmm. So that causes the child to learn how to suppress rage and anger at the childhood level. Yeah. Now that, of course, they, they then have huge amounts of fear associated with anger with the expression of childhood anger, childlike anger. Not, n not a different type of anger, which we'll talk about next, which is the anger that most people also have uh -huh. and engage in all the time, yeah. but rather the anger associated with the suppressed childhood experience as a child. Yeah. Now, as a result of trying to get away from that, yeah. you will enter addictions. And those addictions will be one of those three forms of addictions, which will be emotional, physical, or substance related generally. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. The fourth, the fourth <coughs> example is attempting to deny, resist, or suppress truth with lies masquerading as truth. Yes. Now this, uh, this, but a lot of the world is addicted to this. Yeah. The way to stay away from emotion is to deny the truth about the emotion. 
So the, the way to feel an emotion at the causal level is to accept the truth about the emotion. And the way to stay away from the emotion is to deny the truth about the emotion. Mm -hmm. So lies masquerading as truth become very acceptable emotionally to us. Mm -hmm. So we want to hear the lies masquerading as truth rather than hear the truth itself. The truth itself will expose the underlying causal emotion. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. So what we choose to do is accept a whole heap of lies masquerading as truth. Uh, we can give some examples here. For example, most people, when you tell them that their parents didn't love them, they'll say, that's a lie. Mm. They'll say, my parents loved me. And then you ask them, did your parents smack you? They go, yes, but they love me. There's the lie masquerading as truth. Yeah. Vi a violent parent doesn't prove love. It proves violence. It proves there was no love in that moment, right? Yeah. There's the lie masquerading as truth. But we want to tell ourselves the lie that our parents loved us so that we don't have to feel the truth that they did not. Mm -hmm. And we'd prefer to accept this lie. And as a society, we prefer to accept the lie. And also as individuals, we prefer to accept the lie. Yeah. So this is an example of a lie masquerading as truth that we use to suppress our underlying causal emotion. Yeah. 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 And that is always going to result in an addiction. Yeah. We're going to want somebody to tell us the lies, to feed us the lies. See, inside, there's a feeling inside that none of the lies are real. You know, they're not true. Yeah. But, but so, so we want the lie to be told over and over again. So we want mummy and daddy to tell us they love us all the time yeah. when we don't feel they love us at all. Yes, and this, this was the half-formed question I had earlier. Mm -hmm. And that was, when we have um, a situation in our childhood where lies masqueraded as truth mm -hmm. or where addiction masqueraded as love, um, don't we somewhere internally have a sense of the lie? Um, not always, no. Not always. It depends when the, it was created. So, you know, this is the problem is that if, they were, if these lies were created during our formative years when we had very little logical intellect, then it's highly unlikely we will know. In what fact. about as we open up emotionally ourselves and then become we will sensitive? Know. Right. But it requires sensitivity. Yes. And it requires us to be sensitive to our pain. Yep. And most people aren't. Yep. So, so while most people are desensitised to their pain, they will not know mm -hmm. that, it, that it was unloving or loving, in fact, either one. <laughs> and they will think things were loving when they weren't. They'll think things were unloving when they weren't, yep. you know, because they're not sensitive to the truth. To be sensitive to the truth of any situation, you have to be sensitive emotionally. Yeah. And you have to be sensitive not to the addictive emotions, but rather to the causal emotions. And the majority of people are only sensitive to their addictive emotions. So it's very, very hard when you're only sensitive to your addictive emotions for you to determine what the truth is. Yeah. And therefore you won't feel something was true. Mm. You will believe with all your heart that the opposite was true when it was not. And it's only by someone being in your face, logical, with you going, no, it can't be the truth, that can't be right, that can't be right, until you go, oh, maybe it's not right. Uh, usually before you'll come to accept the, the real truth, God's truth about the situation. Yeah. yeah. So it's sad, it's sad what happens to us in that childhood formative experience because we, we finish up believing lies are true, we finish up believing truths are lies, we finish up believing love is addiction, we finish up believing addiction is love, we finish up believing that something that's really love is not love at all. You know, we come, we come away from the experience with so many false beliefs that we now have to, as an adult, be willing to unravel. Now, God's willing to help us unravel all of these things, mm -hmm. but it's just whether we're willing to go through the painful emotional experience. And for the majority of people, they aren't mm. willing to go through the painful emotional experience. And so they never unravel it, even though they hear truth over and over again for many years. They still won't unravel it until they're willing to go through the painful emotional experience. Yeah. And that's how the human soul functions. Yeah. Until we're willing to get rid of the resistance emotionally within our soul to accepting truth, we will not accept the truth no matter how much we tell it mm -hmm. to ourselves and to others. Mm -hmm. We just won't accept it. And that, that's what dominance does in the soul. Yep. So we need to understand the principles of how the soul functions 
to really understand how to unravel all of this mess that's been created <laughs> in our soul. Yeah. But really the primary creator of the mess is just our unwillingness to feel pain. That's the primary creator of the mess. And once you understand that, it becomes very simple to unravel the mess. Yeah. You need to learn how to be willing to feel your pain. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the main thing that you need to learn, in fact. Mm. Yeah. So it is quite simple to unravel once you understand that. But unfortunately for most people, there's a deep unwillingness to feel any pain at all. And as a result, you know, we, we revert to addictions and so forth to avoid them. Yeah, mm. yeah. Thank you. Thanks.